What is going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. Today, <laughs> today I bought something I never bought before because I'm thinking about going into the Uber business, the rideshare business. For those of you that don't know, my channel used to be called Uber Man back in the day. I did Uber and Lyft for many, many years. And I thought, you know what? Maybe it's time to step back from YouTube a little bit, take a break <laughs> and get back into the rideshare industry. And what better way to do it than with this. One of the worst Cadillac engines ever produced is in this 2001 Cadillac Stretch Limousine. This thing is huge and clean title, never wrecked, Carfax two owner vehicle with only 45,000 original miles. That's right, Carfax verified certified 45,000 original miles. Now, if you don't recognize where I'm at, that's because I'm in Tulsa, Oklahoma. This is about two hours away from where I live and where I normally do business. I don't have a ride. I caught an Uber up here because towing this to get it towed back to my place was $1,600. I don't know about you, but I'm not paying $1,600 to tow a car home that's supposed to run and drive. All right. Now, I haven't seen this car in person. I bought this sight unseen. It literally popped up during the auction on the auction block. And I was like, oh man, I got to have it. I got to have it. So I proceeded bidding, got into a bidding war with somebody. And uh, well, <laughs> against my better judgment, I bid a lot more on it than I had really intended. Considering I hadn't come out here and seen it for myself, I ended up bidding somewhere in the neighborhood of $3,800 on this stretch limousine. How much did it come out to after fees? Oh, just a measly 4,800 and something dollars. Yeah, $4,800. The Uber trip up here cost me $110. And now I'm stuck because if this car doesn't run or it's got a bad transmission or <laughs> Let's just point out the obvious head gasket problems. <laughs> this car won't make it back. And if it doesn't make it back, I am stuck in the middle of nowhere. This is literally, I mean, Tulsa's not in the middle of nowhere, but it really is. We're, we're kind of in the middle of nowhere here, guys. Uh, what's, what, what am I gonna do? Pay $1,600 to have the car towed home? That doesn't seem like a, a very plausible idea. So I brought some basic tools including a booster pack, air compressor, 45,000 miles. I've never had a 45,000 mile Cadillac before. Oh, she's got coolant, orange coolant. That, that was my biggest concern. So are we gonna get it and see that it doesn't have coolant? No, she she has coolant. That's good, that's, that's real good. We're off to a good start. Let's check the oil and see if it's got milkshake. It is so sketchy buying a car sight unseen, especially when you have no ride home. Clean oil. Ah, no coolant. Clean oil. Carfax shows the transmission has been flushed. Transmission's been serviced, so that should be good to go. Let's go ahead and put some power to it. And we're gonna find out real quick if it actually runs. I'm, I'm real nervous, guys. I'm, I'm real nervous. As most of you know, I don't generally spend this kind of money on these YouTube cars. Um, this is one of the most expensive. Next to this, I think, is the Mercedes S63 AMG that I bought for around five or six grand. So this is up there. This is up there. Okay, can you guys see the dash? I don't know, let's see. Oh. Uh. Oh, it's running. Okay. Woo! <laughs> um, that was scary, man. Oh, that was scary. What is this? Flashing lights? It's got flashing lights? Does the important window work? Yes, it does. We'll go ahead and leave that down. Yeah, she's running. Now it is 36 degrees outside. So hopefully that's not head gasket. <laughs> Wouldn't this thing just be so much fun? How does that open? 
I don't think the flashing light system is working. Um, wouldn't this thing be so much fun just to like travel around in? You could put your dog and your kids and, oh, it does have the flashing lights. There it is. There it is. Alternator's charging at 15 volts. I'll tell you what, guys, if you keep the cooling system serviced on this, since it only has 45,000 miles on it, if you maintain this cooling system, flush the coolant regularly, this thing might actually last a long, long time. Uh, so far, I'm impressed. I'm impressed because these are not cheap. They're not cheap vehicles. They're purpose-oriented vehicles. Normally, you'll see the tops on these are completely deteriorated, ripped, and torn up. The vinyl top on this is in very good shape. The body's in good shape. The paint is in relatively good shape as well. It died. Let me guess. It's got a bad battery. All right, I got it running again. It got in the car and I've got check gas cap. This one is a little scary. Check coolant level. Now I know it's got coolant in it, but apparently it thinks it's a little bit low. And because of that, it's got the cooling fans running on max. Even the air conditioning pusher fans are running on max because it thinks it doesn't have any coolant. It's running great. It's not misfiring at all. It sounds healthy, but we're just gonna have to keep our eye on the temperature and see what happens. I was able to open the trunk. I'm assuming the battery or batteries are gonna be back here somewhere. Heck, I don't know. That's a big tire right there, full size. Oh, it's flat. <laughs> we didn't even get a we didn't even get a spare uh, a spare tire that's any good. All right. This is a car that belonged to a funeral home for the last several years. All right, I don't know where they put the battery in this thing, honestly. Huh, I guess if you guys know, comment down below. By that time, though, it'll be too late. She's still running. She's running well. Uh, the tires, you know, I mean, the wheels look great. Unfortunately, the tires look a little, they look a little dated. They're 235 60 17s. They definitely got some dry rotten and cracking going on you can hear those fans just screaming away yeah i got a feeling these tires are uh these tires are pretty old guys i guess we'll see if we can shut this off if it'll stay running or not or if it's gonna try to die on us again you can listen to it though i mean it sounds healthy and as far as blow by watch this nothing nothing at all Idle doesn't change. She sounds good. The coolant is circulating. I can feel the, uh, the, the hose getting hotter. You know what we gotta do, guys? We're just gonna have to get it out on the road. Maybe stop at an auto zone or a Walmart or something. Let's grab some coolant just in case and uh, hit the road. All right, guys, it's moment of truth. It is 412 p.m. The miles are at 45,796. I think I'm just going to hit the highway, guys. I know we should probably stop and get fluids and stuff, but I think we're just going to go. <laughs> we have about a two-hour drive home. It is over 100 miles in a car that I just paid $5,000 for and I have never seen or even heard run until today. This sounds like an absolutely great, oop, there go my tools. This sounds like a great idea. I've got the keys getting bound up in the steering wheel here. Hold on. All right, it's just gonna have to stay there and hopefully it doesn't get too tangled up. Oh boy, the turning radius on this thing sucks. Oh my goodness. Come on, go. Let me out, let me out. This thing is huge. Oh my goodness. Okay, here we go. <laughs> it's shifting. It's sh shifting. All right. We're at 40 miles an hour. 
The steering is good. It feels good. The brakes are great. He wants me to follow this around to the right. Yeah, I don't know where I'm at, guys. Maybe we should stop at a gas station if I find one and go ahead and fill the tank up. Oh my. Guys, this thing, what's it like driving a limousine? It is different. <laughs> it is so different. It's so big. Wow. We're doing 50 miles an hour, guys, and she is smooth as silk. There's a gas station right here, a quick trip. Maybe we can just blow through this light here. Or can I, hold on, can I, sorry. I feel bad for the people behind me. I'm one of them drivers, I don't know where the heck I'm going. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's not sketchy at all. All those boards hanging out. Guys, we're gonna stop at the quick trip real quick. Let's go ahead and fill up with some fresh gas before we make this journey home. All right, we got a full tank of premium unleaded and we're about to jump onto the interstate here. I'm telling you, if ever there was a bad idea, this was it. This was absolutely it. All right, girl, let's see what you got. Let's go. Um, one of the biggest things to look out for on this car is going to be blind spots. That should be uh, that should be obvious. Blind spots are going to be absolutely horrible. On top of that, turning radius is really bad. So you're trying to make a right turn or something, uh, you got to swing it kind of wide, or you'll end up uh, bringing the rear end <laughs> over a curb or something. All right, here we go. I mean, we're cruising right now, 63 miles an hour. The tires feel okay. I, they're not great. These are very old tires, um, even on a smooth road, which we do have occasionally out here. You can feel a very slight vibration, but not anything that's, that's overly concerning to me. I'm gonna be keeping my eye on the temperature gauge. Obviously, that is my biggest fear with a North Star car, is uh, overheating. But for now, it looks like we're on the road. We've driven 3.1 miles so far and we're not overheated, I'm not having any issues. So I'll check in with you guys here in just a little bit. So we're about 15 miles into the trip, cruising at a steady 65 while getting passed by everybody. Oh, the speed limit's 80. Oh, should we crank it up? No wonder I'm getting passed by her. I didn't realize the speed, I didn't realize the speed limit was 80 miles an hour. All right, I guess we better crank it up because we... <laughs> I don't know. This car has probably been sitting for a long time. There's 75. Let's just set the cruise at 75. Let's let's just try her at 75 and see how it does. All right. Looks like the gas mileage is continuing to go up at 15.7 miles a gallon and climbing. It's getting better. So I can't wait to see what the ending miles per gallon are when we get back to the house. As far as how it is riding, like surprisingly comfortable. There are so many things you could do with, well, there's a lot of things you could do with this. <laughs> uh, use your imagination. This thing is huge. There's so much room back there. Like, honestly, you could load up your family, the dogs, the cat, and everything, all your luggage, and just hit the road, man, and go. This thing, it's a Cadillac. Now, you're not gonna go through any drive-throughs. You're not gonna get in any tight spaces. But as far as traveling in luxury and comfort, oh man, you ain't gonna beat a DeVille, man. This thing is slick. Let's continue on our way. We'll check back in here in a few minutes. So here we are with uh, 60 miles on the odometer now. Well, on the trip anyway, 60 miles. We are just a hair over halfway there, averaging 20.4 miles a gallon. We have no check engine lights, no warning lights on the dash at all, nothing. And if, well, those blind spots are terrifying. If we can make it back before the sun goes down, I found a couple little features that I think are kind of cool that you're not going to find in a regular Cadillac. I definitely want to show you those. I got a lot of people already asking on Instagram, what am I going to do with this car? 
What are we going to do with it? I, I don't know. I have no idea. We're going to wash it and send it back through the hours. I don't know what we're going to do with it. Right now, can I just enjoy the drive home? That's what I want. I want to just drive this car, enjoy it. I've always wanted a limo. Hell, I've always wanted to ride in a limo. I own a limousine right now. Are you kidding me? For under $5,000, I own a 45,000 mile two owner Cadillac stretch limo. We are still getting it, man. We are getting close. We have now driven 81.2 miles. I'm currently cruising at 70 miles an hour, even though it's 80. And what are we getting? 21.4 miles a gallon with a range remaining after almost 100 miles of 391 miles. This thing, it's ridiculous. It really is. I think with a, with a set of tires, some basic fluids, just basic maintenance, this car is solid, guys. It's an unbelievable deal, in my opinion. Now, your opinion may vary, so definitely drop your comments below and tell me what you think. But I think for $4,800, how are you going to beat a nice low-mile stretch limo like this? Now, it belonged to a funeral home. And, you know, it uh, honestly, it kind of smells like a funeral home, which is a little bothersome. It, you know, it, it it's a familiar smell. Now, this was not, obviously, this is not a hearse. This did not have caskets or anything in it like that. This is just what the families would ride in to the burial site and then back. So, you know, it not the best history, I guess, but it looks like the last place took care of it. Carfax is absolutely beautiful on this vehicle. It was well cared for and loved. I also just found a Castrol sticker up here, an oil change sticker that was dated. Uh, the car was to return for its next oil change April 4th of 2019 at a miles of 47,500 and something miles. All right, it doesn't have 47,000 miles on it. It's got 45,000 miles on it. So this thing barely got into that oil change, which means the oil was probably changed around January of 19, and somewhere around February, the car was, was left. It was not driven anymore. I don't want to say abandoned, but obviously uh, around February of 2019, the car was no longer in service, which means it has been sitting for almost three years. So I'm willing to bet the gasoline in it is, it is not fresh, all right? We did manage to put just under half a tank of fresh 91 non-ethanol premium unleaded. 91 is about as good as you get here in Oklahoma. Gasoline into it and it seems to be doing well with this. I can't wait to run this fuel out and get a fresh full tank of fuel in it, a fresh oil and filter change, and you already know I'm gonna change the coolant. <laughs> Immediately, we're gonna have to change the coolant. Get it cleaned up, maybe find a set of good tires for it, and enjoy it. I'm also considering buying a, a tire machine, a uh, tire changing machine as well as a tire balancing machine. I'm considering it because I'm always putting tires on cars. And let me tell you, it costs about $100 to $120 to get tires mounted and balanced at Walmart if you bring your own tires. It's kind of steep, and I was thinking those machines might make a great addition to the shop. So I'm going to continue on my way. I do believe we're going to make it, guys. We're pushing 90 miles now. I should only have about 20 miles left to go. And there is no sign that this car is gonna give up anytime soon. All right, I had to, guys. It's filthy. And I decided, yeah, that we got the, we got the whole family loaded up in this thing, man. I decided to bring it to Oki Express Auto Wash, man, and just get her a quick wash and, you know, make her shine a little bit. This thing gets so much attention, man. <laughs> this car is so much fun to drive around. People can't help but look at it, stop and ask you questions. This thing is, I'm, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. So we're going to get through this car wash, and then we're going to stop at the Midwest City House. Yeah, we still have it. 
We'll check on the Mustang, hopefully get it towed down to AR headquarters. And then I guess we'll try to drive this down to AR. We've put 165 miles on it so far. Uh, by the end of the day, we should easily have 260 to 300 miles uh, since purchasing this car sight unseen. Well guys, she came out looking pretty good. There is a spot on the paint here that I just don't think is gonna come out and I don't know what it's from. It's very bizarre, but it's very discolored, a, a, a nasty yellow. It almost looks like some kind of heat damage or something. You can see that, I don't know. I don't know what that is. That's strange. It even goes a little bit over here down to here as well. I don't know what that is. She really does need a good cleaning. That was all obviously just an automatic car wash. Just something real quick to make it look a little bit better. Um, the rest of the car looks absolutely great, but it does need a good cleaning, good thorough cleaning. I think on the roof here would be nice to clean that up. So maybe put some type of treatment on it as well. She's not a bad looking car at all, guys. Now, a lot of people are asking, you know, if I plan on keeping it or am I getting rid of it? I honestly, I honestly don't know. I don't know. I have so much fun driving this thing around. It gets so much attention and it runs so, so well. And where are you going to find a 45,000 mile stretch limo for under $5,000 that runs and drives reliably? Uh, if you can find one, good luck to you. But I'm telling you, this thing... I feel like we really, really stole it. I gotta get these numbers off. I'll probably do that off camera. There's no reason to mess with that right now. Right now, I am going to call a tow truck to come pick up the uh, the Mustang GT, the SN95. We're gonna get that sent down to AR headquarters so I can get it on, a, on the lift and prepare to pull the transmission out. But man, what a beautiful car. She does need a set of tires. I said that earlier. Um, but other than a set of tires, maybe, I think the... I think we got maybe a tie rod that needs attention on this side. The alignment's definitely off. You can see the uneven wear here on the outside. Uh, something is definitely going on on this wheel. I'll have to get it up in the air to really uh, figure out what's going on. Look how it's just splitting right there. And the tires are old as well. So we'll get into that in another video. But so far, guys... I am absolutely loving this car. Well, guys, she made it down to AR headquarters with very little issue. I did off camera with Michael from Santa's Workshop take a quick peek underneath it. We did not try to put it on the lift. We're going to do that in the next video. Definitely come back for the next video of this. We'll put it on the lift. We'll take a look underneath it, see how good or bad it is. But there's definitely some suspension issue on the driver's side. I'm gonna show you something real quick. Take a look at these tires and they look they look really good, right? Good deep tread. Goodyear Eagle LS, the only tire made for this car. Good tires all the way around. They were severely underinflated at 24 PSI. I have now aired according to the manufacturer's specifications. The rear ones are at 51. The fronts are at 58. They're load range E. So I believe that makes these 10 ply tires. All right, tires are in really good shape, except for one. One, this one right here. I want you to see just how bad this is. All right, take a look. Look at how bad that is. I mean, this left front tire is in horrible condition. And if you think the outside wear is bad, you should see the inside. This sucker is tore up. Now. Michael and I jacked the car up, took a quick peek underneath it. We didn't find anything wrong with the suspension on this side. I was, I was shocked. We did find a bad CV axle on this side, though, which will cause vibration, noises. I think it's that CV axle. By the way, these are eight lug wheels. I'm not kidding you. Eight lug wheels. This is like big pickup truck type of wheels. Eight lug nuts. Are you serious? Uh, we got all the numbers off of it. We cleaned it up. Nick came out here. We all took part in it. Nick helped clean up the interior. Jessica got some of the stuff off of the windows, and I helped out as well. We took turns. Oh, and in case I forgot to tell you, I fixed the dome lights. Look at that. The dome lights work now. See, they light up. Even back here. Check it out. Got lights. Yeah. How nice is that? Even the lights up here? 
and over there work as well. Yeah, it was just a blown 10 amp fuse. Another thing I did without you guys, I know I'm horrible. I'm horrible. Um, that pusher fan that they added, that's an aftermarket pusher fan. It is loud. It's obnoxious. It's absolutely horrible. Also, if anybody knows where I can find these, please, please let me know. Just the covers. These covers pop off just like this. All right. And they've got a part number, I think, which is 1076 GEM. I don't know what that is, but also these tiny little lights, teeny tiny little lights. I would like to, uh, I'd like to put them back. And I've got one in my pocket somewhere that I could show you guys if I can find it. But I want to pop the hood and show you the wiring job. Uh, here's the light bulb right here. Look, guys, this thing is so tiny. That little teeny bulb right there. There's only a couple of them that are burned out, but there's two in each. This is itty bitty. I looked for writing on it and I couldn't find any, but that's it. If anybody has a part number for me on this, please let me know. And if you can find these, definitely drop a link down below or something for me. I would truly, truly appreciate it. I also found this right here, um, Southwest Professional Vehicles, Inc. in Dallas and Kansas City, new and used coaches and limousines. So that was in there. Now I'm gonna show you the wiring job on this fan. It was absolutely, uh, it was absolutely awful. <laughs> absolutely awful. So here's this extra fan, or maybe it's factor. I mean, it looks, it almost looks like it belongs there. I don't know, but here's the wires. You've got this ground wire here. You've got this hot wire that's already broken open and laying up against metal. You got wires that go through here and that wire came over here to the fuse box and look at how bad this is. Look at this. They wrapped it around a fuse in the fuse block and, and just had it shoved down like this. So I filled up the coolant, made sure the coolant is topped off, checked all the other fluids. They're all good. Filled up the washer fluid. All those lights are off now. The only light left on the dash says check gas cap. So let's check. Let's check the gas cap real quick. Yep, it's tight, but maybe. No, the gasket looks, I mean, it's a little, it's a little cracked, so maybe it does need a gas cap. I'll see if I can find another factory gas cap for this, because it really does seem to, it complains a lot about the gas cap. But there she is, guys. She is all cleaned up inside and out. Not perfect, but I mean, it does look a heck of a lot better than it did. I am going to have to take it down to Firestone. I still gotta get tires for this. I'm working on a sponsorship because the tires are super expensive for this, but it definitely needs an alignment. The suspension is solid though. It's just gonna need that CV axle replaced. So let's go ahead and start it up and I'll show you the only light left on. Oh, it's so much quieter without that loud, obnoxious pusher fan. We now have 46,025 miles check gas cap. That's it, that's all she's got left is check gas cap and it's gonna say probably like door ajar or something like that. Maybe not. Check gas cap and that's it. 18.7 miles a gallon average. She purrs like a kitten. Super quiet, she sounds very, very good. Check coolant level, okay. So apparently there's an issue with the coolant level sensor because that coolant is absolutely full, but that light keeps coming on. So I don't know, we'll figure that out. Anyway, I got one more thing to do and that is drive it the rest of the way home. And by that time we should be at 290 miles, 200. So we're close to the 300 miles that I thought we were gonna drive it today. Not bad for a car that I bought sight unseen sitting at a salvage auction. Now I know a lot of people are also curious about what's going on with the Mustang GT because I have been very, very lazy when it comes to this car. I have, I've got, well, I got some information on this tonight, but you're gonna have to stay tuned for the video coming out on the 2000 Mustang GT, the SN95 that we picked up from IA for dirt cheap video of this car. Very first video hit number one and is doing very, very well. Let's just say underneath it, it's, 
got some relatively expensive suspension components. It's got some expensive exhaust components. It's got what looks to be a remanufactured performance transmission along with a performance clutch. And I already know what the problem is with it, but I'm not gonna tell you because you've got to come back for the next video. Stay tuned. We're gonna be dropping the transmission in this car very, very soon. And I'm gonna video the whole thing. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. And when we're done, we are going to have one hell of a ripper of a Mustang GT, a quick car. I guarantee you this car is gonna be quick for what it is for the modular V8. It's gonna be nice and fast. We're definitely gonna do a little work to the exhaust too. The Harley Davidson is still sitting here looking pretty as ever. And I don't know what to do with the seat out of the Diamante. It looks like someone let one loose after a Taco Bell. Uh, if you want this seat, let me know. I'll sit outside the shop. You can come get it if you got something you can use it on or, or if you want to burn it, whatever the case is. For me, though, it is time for me to get this car back to the Hacienda. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get out of here. I really hope you enjoyed these last few videos that I've done. I've spent a lot of money and I've been putting quite a bit of effort into trying to make these videos entertaining for you. So if you thought the video was awesome, hit the thumbs up button and let me know. Be sure to drop your comments down below. And if you think we're done far from it, guys, I'm I'm working on another car right now that hopefully you guys will like. I figure we got a couple modern cars that are interesting. Maybe, maybe we should get something a little older, maybe like an early 70s two-door Buick, sight unseen, 2,000 miles away, that looks like it's in beautiful, original, unmolested condition. I mean, it's five grand, but might be worth it, right? Definitely drop those comments down below and tell me what you think. I'm out of here. Stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.